Hello, good afternoon viewers and welcome to today's episode of Real Estate Live with Olisa. We are very sorry that we are starting an hour late, but then we sent information about an hour ago to that effect. Today we'll be discussing mortgages and how mortgages work in Nigeria. And to do justice to this topic, we have um, a real estate entrepreneur in the house. We have someone who is also a developer. He has been into real estate for about 16 years. He's the CEO of Caliteros Homes Limited, owners of Peace Cuts and Zappa Cuts here in Lekki. He's Mr. Ademolu Oyenuga. Say hi. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much for agreeing to be on today's show. You're welcome. Yeah. So, we'll get straight to business. If you're watching, just tell us your name and where you are watching from. And this show is going to last for about 30 minutes. At the end of the show, you'll be able to ask questions. Just ask your questions in the comment below, and our guest will answer your questions. So let's get straight to business. What exactly is the process of getting a mortgage loan in Nigeria? Let's start with that. OK, uh, I think we'll start from what a mortgage is, you know, looking at it on the local market. Um, a mortgage is a, is a legal. Um, transaction you have with a bank against a loan, against a um, property, which you have to pay over a set period of time. So between the uh, mortgagee and the mortgagee, there's a conveyance that is done. You know, and that conveyance is always, you know, um, registered in the, in the title registry. And um, what happens is that if the mortgagee performs on the loan, then that conveyance is void, which means that um, the bank can take up the land on it and um, the property becomes the owner's own 100 percent okay so um looking at the local market what's the process of getting a mortgage first of all um you first identify the kind of property you want and um, you know the price and um you will probably approach um, you approach a mortgage bank and say okay you want to you know buy a property what the mortgage bank will ask you is, what is your net income? You know, after taking off your taxes and all that, like what's your net income? And um, with that, they can profile you. Where do you work? You know, if you have a stable um, job, probably you work for a blue chip company, an oil company, or a bank. You know, a company that um, is stable. You know, and um, probably you contribute to the pension fund as well. So, once they ask you that, they will now look at what a third of your income is meant to pay back. A third? A third of your income is meant to pay back your, your monthly repayment on your, on your mortgage. So once they can profile you and once your credit is good, then I, I think um, you, you're about starting a, a mortgage process with that. Okay. So um, now why, why do you think that, that there are lots of people who use mortgage loans in Nigeria? Why, why is it that people are scared of taking mortgage loans in Nigeria? Um, I, I wouldn't say there are not a lot of people, but we don't have data, you know, enough data, you know, to, to say how many people are getting mortgages and all that. But I think on, on the, on, um, what happens outside there is that people, you know, have this phobia about, um, mortgages. And one of the things that spikes that phobia is the, is the, um, double digit interest rates, you know, that banks are asking for in Nigeria. Double is like? Say from 17 to about 24 percent. Okay. And you know, when you're paying that much on, on your interest, you know, it's, it's really huge. And um, if care is not taken, in the fourth or fifth year, you would be paying, you know, double the value of that house. So I think that's the phobia for people that the interest rates are too high. Normally, you know, in, um, overseas, um, in developed countries, you have mortgage the interest at single digits so by then they encourage people you know first time buyers people who buy to invest buy to let and all that so you find out that interest rates abroad is normally between two to five percent you know but here on the local market it's between 15 to 24 percent and that's that's scary so that's that's a major problem that's, that's interest rate. yeah the interest rate is the other thing you think um the other thing is that people are scared of going to the bank to collect money. And I think that at the end of the day, the bank will end up, you know, owning up their property. So that's that phobia as well. Okay. okay. So now let's, let's come down to 
getting a mortgage loan. Okay, I won't get a mortgage loan. Where can I get a mortgage loan? Where can someone who needs a mortgage loan apply for a mortgage loan? Um, they're, they're PMIs. PMIs are called primary mortgage institutions. Okay. So there are quite a number of them in Nigeria. So you approach them. Also, the commercial banks also, you know, give out uh, mortgage loans as well. But I think um, PMI is your best option because they understand that market very well. And I think, you know, so a PMI, you walk to any PMI, you know, and um, you can start that process. The PMI is the deal with just, just mortgage, like only? Um, they also take in investments, time, time investments, you know, when you place money with them, they also do that as well. Okay. But mainly, they're supposed to only now generate mortgages and, and give out uh, mortgages. Apart from the PMIs and the commercial banks, those commercial banks who give mortgages, are there, are there any other sources of mortgage loans? Um, if you... In um, big companies, you know, uh, multinationals, you could have, you know, their cooperatives. You know, everybody pays into a fund and they set up a cooperative. So you can have an in-house arrangement whereby you give out um, loans to your, mortgage loans to your, to your staff, to your colleagues, you know. So over time, they pay, you know, a little, little by little, you know, over time. So you could have that arrangement, you know, in a, multi in a multinational okay. who sets up such cooperatives. Okay. All right. So um, let's talk about paying back the mortgage. What's what's the maximum um, repayment period you would recommend for someone who's taking a mortgage? And how would you advise that people pay their mortgage? Um, the maximum time you have between five to twenty years. Some commercial banks offer you twenty years, and um, PMI is mostly averagely of ten years. So, but uh, because the mortgage rates are, are, are double digits, I will always advise um, people to not to do more than five years. You know, and um, when you take up a mortgage, then you have to tweak your lifestyle, you know, because of the same reason, double digits. So, it's so things that you have to do away with. So, in the first three years, you can say, okay, I'm going to do away with, you know, buying a new car. I'm probably not going to travel for the next few years. So that in the first three years you're paying lump sum, you know, every year. So that reduces your principal, and um, the other fourth and fifth year it'll be easy on your on your on your salary. So what you're saying is, if I take a mortgage and I'm supposed to pay in ten years, I should make sure or try and see how I can pay up my mortgage in five years. Is yes, that what you're saying? about seventy percent. Okay, about seventy percent in five years. Yes, minimum. So that that's my that's my opinion. That's my advice. Okay, okay. Okay, now let's 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 look at this. Young people, people who are in their twenties, people who are in their thirties, who are gainfully employed. Do you advise that they take a mortgages on? Probably they want to buy houses. How? What do you advise? Do you say okay, let them go and take mortgages? What kind of houses do you advise that they buy? And how do you advise that they climb the property ladder? Um, like, like I always say, and I encourage young people who have a steady income once they you know, finish their NYC, once you know you have, um, you've been, um, you know, you have a steady income, you have a steady, steady job, I think a year or two into that job, I think you should look, look into getting on the property ladder. But you need to ask a question, from what I'm earning, can I meet up my repayment, monthly repayment? Well, you see, that's, it's relative, you know. So, for instance, if, if a young guy always desired to have his first property on the lucky axis and he can't afford it, because um, a two bed or a three bed probably starts on 25 million, and by, that might be too heavy. My advice is that they should look elsewhere, you know, where they can get in at a lower value, say, an apartment that's five or seven million, you know, so they get into that, and um, with time, they could enjoy some product, um, appreciation in value, you know, and that payment of a house between five to seven million won't be too heavy on them. But what they've done is that they've gone in early, say 22, 23, they've gone in early, so say another five, seven years, the same property they bought for seven to five to seven million, the value can jump up, up to about 10 to, to 12 million. So what that means is that. All right, now, what happens if, one, if, if, if someone takes a mortgage? Again. Do you need to ask again? 
So what happens if someone takes a mortgage and cannot keep up with the payment of the mortgage? What happens? Uh, what happens in your in your contract? You have um, a default period. If you have ninety days consecutively of default, then you, you lose the property. Okay. So if you don't pay for three months, you lose the property. And do you lose all your investments, all your money? You put no, in? you don't lose all your investment. You probably get back your equity if it's still in a positive range. Okay. So for instance, if someone buys a house for ten million and its equity is three million. And um, the value by the time the bank is coming, you know, to, to sell that property because you're defaulting, you know, and if that property has climbed up to say twelve or thirteen million, the bank might want to sell it as a for sale, you know, value which could be less than nine million, you know, just for them to just exit and take away that seven million that they've been exposed that they are exposed to. Okay. So what could happen is that if they sell it, if you sell it before the bank, then you get that plus. On your equity, okay. so if you sell it for 13 million, so the bank only wants maybe 7.5, you know, 8 million. The other difference added to your equity, and um, you you take out about um, 6 million from that transaction. So what you're saying is, try not to default. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, I'll go to the next question then. When do you think is the best time to take a mortgage? Like I said, um, once you, once you have a steady steady job, a year or two into a steady job, is a good time to to get a mortgage. You know, it's it's um, you can look at it as a as a strategy to savings. You know, so that um, you don't um, start early in life to have you know a high taste or high standard of um, of life. You know, so you could use that as a discipline. You know, um, um, tool or discipline um, to discipline yourself. You know, and um, going wherever the property is. Once the title is good, once the rental in that area is great, you crunch your numbers. And, I think you're, you're good to go once you're once a third of your your salary can can afford the repayment. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 before I ask the next question, let's let's give you a real life example. A young guy just finished from from NYC. He just got a job and he's gainfully employed. A good job. Now there is Lekki. There is let's say Ebeda or Ayobo or one of those places, and he wants to get into the um, property market, right? And what do you suggest he, that he does, you know? What should he do? What do you, do you say, okay, go get a mortgage for your house in Ayobo, or do you say get a mortgage for a house in Lekki? And how long do you think he should um, stay before getting his next house? Just, just try and give us a real life example. I think basically it's a factor of what the guy earns. Okay. You know, there are people who on their first job they're taking in, taking home like two million a month. Mm -hmm. You know, and someone else could be taking home maybe five hundred thousand a month. So it's a factor of how much you earn. You know, so that's the starting point. Okay. So that will tell you, okay, I can afford to get on the property ladder on a high end area or on the low end market. Okay. Mm. So that's that's it. Okay. All right. Now, do mortgages also work for people who have lands and they want to take a loan they could use to build? Does that work as well? Uh, I, from my experience, I think um, on the personal level, I think banks shy away from that. Okay. But what they have is that they have a developers or construction um, loan, you know. But um, for individuals, you know, they want um, somewhere whereby. It's a building that is roofed, has windows and has doors. So that is a different uh, uh, product with the bank. So I won't, they, won't, they won't call it the mortgage. Is there a reason for shining away from this kind of? Um, I think it's a risk factor, you know, it's a risk factor, you know. Uh, at times you try to start, start to build a house and you have your bill of quantity and you're two or three months into that construction you might just kind of rocket, you know, and you'll be able to finish that project. So I think it's a risk factor for this high, this high, you know, it's a high risk for the bank. You know, so it's easier for them to sell a, sell a building that has a roof, doors and windows, than just a bare land. Okay, let's, let's, let's digress a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's look at somewhere like um, Ibejileki, where we know that lands are cheap. Like, when I say cheap, I mean compared to 
other um, places like Ileki. Would you ad what do you think? Would you advise someone who wants to invest in land, for instance, to say, okay, when you're buying land, instead of buying one plot, we're going to buy in bulk, let's say two, three, four, five plots, now that it's cheap, so that when the price goes up, you could sell part of it and use it to develop the others. What's, what's your take on this? Yeah, it's a strategy a young person you know, can, can, can um, have that, um, okay, probably in the bedroom, like you said, the land's going for 600 to 1 million, and the guy has 5 million, he can buy five to seven plots, you know, the good title and, um, you know, sell about four out of it later on once there's um, capitalization and um, use it to start, you know, building his own house. So it could be a strategy that could be employed. All right. Now, let's round, it, let's round this up. Let's talk to a layman now who doesn't understand the real estate industry. He doesn't know how to go about this whole mortgage thing. What steps, like let's take it step by step, what steps should anybody who wants to take a mortgage follow? Okay, it's one, what do you do? What next do you do? And steps that will ensure that he does not default as well. <laughs> let's take it from the beginning down to the end. Okay, um, I think the first step a very secure job, you know, a job that you're sure that you're going to, you know, probably have for the next five to ten years. Uh, the next thing is uh, to go on websites of um, PMIs and um, you do your mortgage, you have a mortgage calculator, there are tools there you can use. So even before approaching your bank, you know, you can go on the website and, you know, just crunch your numbers. They ask you how much you're earning, your net income. They ask you the value of your property, and they ask you your equity. Then with that, if you put all that information, you know, and, um, you can tell you immediately that um, from what you're earning, this is what the bank can give to you, give up to you, and um, this is how much you'll be paying every month. So once you now do that, you know, on, on uh, a rule of thumb, you just say, okay, my third, third of my income, can you pay back the repayments comfortably? So I, if the third of my income is 300,000 and my repayment is 170,000, then it's comfortable for me, you know. So that's already, you, you can um, pre-qualify yourself that 50%, you know, even before you approach the bank, the bank will likely say yes. But the next thing is that once you approach the bank, they'll, they'll check, you know, your, your, your the profile, you know, check where you work, find out if your salary can be domiciled to their bank, Find out um, if the property has a good title. Find out um, if you have good credit, you know, and check you out if your credit is good. And um, once that is, is all, you know, once all those boxes can be ticked, then uh, you're, you're on the way to get to the mortgage. Okay, um, I think that's all for now. Now, okay, go ahead. I want to tell us a bit about Collateral Homes mm. and the Products or the projects you mm. are handling. Yeah. Uh, b before, uh, there's another thing I want to, you know, pass across to the public, you know, okay. about um, mortgage in Nigeria. You know, what um, obtains that there are three, three um, sources of um, mortgages, and um, you have the NHF. Okay. You know, NHF is um, is Nigerian um, Housing Fund, where you as an employee, you pay about 2.5% of your salary, you know, to this fund. So once you do that for six months, you are qualified to access that loan. Okay. But that pool of fund can't meet the demand, you know, of people who want to access it. So once you send an application to get, trying to get a, a mortgage from the NHF, you find out that it takes a very long time to process. You might start, it might take three years. So it's, it's um, except the person wants to wait that long. And if that's the person's, that's um, his only, you know, um, choice. Then after that, you have um, the banks, you know, that will give you based on what the NPR is doing at that point in time. So the NPR is their base interest rate and they'll put their markup on it. Say, for instance, the NPR is 15%, then the bank can put between seven and 8% on it. So for you, they'll now give you the, the, your interest will probably be between 22 and 24. 
And the other one is, like I said, if you have a cooperative, you know, there's a, um, all, the, all the staff pools their money and um, they can give their, their, their staff, you know, five to ten years repayment um, period. So, but the other one that is new, you know, that I'll give credit to in the last government is called the NMRC. NMRC is called the Nigerian Mortgage Rediscounting Company. Okay. What that company has come to do is to create liquidity in the system for the PMIs. So for instance, um, back in the days, one of the problems of the PMI was that getting cheap funds for mortgages and also liquidity. Mm -hmm. So but what that Nigerian Mortgage Rediscounting Company has done is to go on the stock market is a, is a private initiative, a kind of private public, and you have some participating banks, the PMIs as well, and come to some commercial banks, about 19 or 20 of them. So they've come together, they own part of that NMRC. So what NMRC has done is that they've come to standardize the process of mortgages and also the laws whereby a foreclosure will be faster, you know, if the bank wants to take a property back from a defaulting mortgage. It will be a faster process. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they've come to make sure that uh, there's liquidity with the banks. So, what the primary mortgage institutions would do is to generate a mortgage, and that mortgage stays on their books for six months. So, by that six months, they're able to say, okay, this person who has taken this mortgage, he's good with his repayment and pays right on time. So, what happens is that that pool of mortgage that they've generated, they now sell it to NMRC at a discount, i.e. they've generated one billion in mortgages. They can go back, NMRC will now take it maybe for about 800 million, whereby creating liquidity for the banks to generate more mortgages. Mm -hmm. So, and that has what, I mean, started last year, the last one that was done, it was done at, the, the bond was raised at 15%. So what happens is that they now give it on to the PMIs with a little bit of markup. I think the, the PMIs put 3% on top of that. So you have mortgages between 17 and 18%. Okay. You know, and those bonds are normally between, I think the last one that was done was 15 years. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is that they've, they're able to raise long-term funding because that's the bane of mortgages in Nigeria. Where do they get cheap long-term funding? I mean, NMRC coming into, into, B, into B, they've been able to achieve still double digits but at least there's liquidity, there's standardization, and um, there's also the issue of, you know, um, um, making sure that banks, you know, conform, you know, to how they process the mortgages and making sure that um, mortgages are affordable over time. So if the, so maybe the um, NPR comes to 8% one day, and they sell their bonds, you know, at, at 12 percent. Interest rates will come down. Yeah. So I think that's fantastic in the mortgage industry right now. Okay. So before you just started saying that, I was talking about calitarius homes. Yeah. Yes. Calitarius homes. Well, calitarius homes. Um, we're into property development, and we um, we we're, we're in the mid mid market segment. What I mean by mid market segment is that um, we build houses no more than 50 million naira. Okay. You know because um, I believe that that there's a, there's a good market share. You know in that bandwidth. And what we've also done is to also come down in our offerings. So we have one bed, two beds, and three beds. So for instance, our one bed in in where we're developing at the moment sell for 15 million. A two bed sell for 25 million and a three bed sells for 35 million, four beds 45 million. And, and in the future, we want to do something like studios that will probably sell for 10 million okay. so that it will be easy for people to get on the property ladder. It doesn't have to be the property you always want to you know, buy. There's still time for you to climb up on that ladder, you know, start from a studio to a one bed to a two bed to a three bed. So that's what Caliteros is trying to do in the market. You know, be innovative in their approach and uh, make sure that um, people can climb up into that ladder. You know, at, at a very low point. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on to this show. Any last words for our viewers? Um, um, I, I, what I want people to do is to always go out there and seek information. You know, a lot of people don't have information about how mortgages work. 
But what I also want to say with the banks is that they should try and keep things very simple. You know, i.e., if you go on a bank's website, you know, every bank should have a mortgage calculator. But banks in Nigeria, is either they make it very cumbersome or not easy to understand. And if I compare that to home finance in Ghana, you know, if you go to their website, the mortgage calculator is very easy. I'm not even talking about what obtains abroad, you know, because first thing what you want to do is you want to play around with the mortgage tools to know whether you can either do a fixed, whether your, your interest rate can be a fixed cost or variable cost, okay. you know, so, or it's going to be hybrid, you know, so I think people should go out there and, you know, get that information and um, use the mortgage to get on the property ladder. You don't have to stay up till the tenor of the mortgage. You don't have to be there for 15 to 10, 20 years on the mortgage, you know, on the tenor, but just use it as a, as a leverage to get on the property ladder Pay it down as quickly as you can and enjoy appreciation on that property. Instead of you paying rent to someone else who gets mortgage, why don't you pay that rent you would have paid to someone else who has gotten a mortgage and use that to build equity on your own property? So I think uh, people should um, you know, learn to do that. And for, for, the, for, the, um, for the country, um, I think um, a lot of money is tied down in bricks and mortar. You know, whereby you want to buy a house, you're putting down 50 million cash, 100 million naira cash. With a mortgage, you only need to put down 20%. And with that 70%, you could put in business or put in another investment, you know, and thereby creating liquidity in the system so that people can have good funds to, to other sorts of, you know, investment. So we want to move from that place, uh, from, from where we pay, 100% cash to get in mortgages where you only pay 20-15% either as a first time buyer or someone who's buying to let. And the other 70 to 60% is there for you to, you know, put in another investment. So uh, I think that will work for the country, you know, instead of people always paying 100% cash to, to buy properties. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for You're agreeing welcome. to be on today's show. All right, guys, you have heard it all. Now, um, the truth is, if you have questions, you can ask after this show, and our guest will answer your questions. And for those of you who can see the post already, I just tired this recently. If you have any real estate question, if you have an issue bothering you concerning real estate, and you need to talk to someone, why not just click on the link on this post and book a free 15 minute consultation call with me and we'll, we'll get to discuss your issue. Now finally, to the offer of the week, this week we are gonna be talking about the Lights Homes Estate in Ibejuleki along the free trade zone. It has um, an accession file number and it's currently going for 600,000 Naira per plot. Now there's a promo going on which is gonna end on the 31st of October. That's in some days, about 10 days. You can buy five plots of this est of lands in this estate and get one plot free. That's you are going to be spending six hundred thousand naira per plot times five. That's three million naira for one acre. So, thank you very much, guys, for being for watching today's show. Thank you very much for your time. Until next week, Friday, for our next episode of Real Estate Live with Lisa. See you guys. Bye bye. Signing out.